Well, in the last lesson, we introduced you to the concept of biblical mentoring, what it is, and who's qualified to do that. And hopefully you uh, feel qualified enough to continue to explore this idea. And so in this lesson, we're going to talk about three men mentoring principles. Now, um, these are just framing principles. There's, there's a lot to mentoring, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you are at it, and the more you'll want to do it. But these three mentoring principles are helpful to sort of start with, to say, okay, now you understand what mentoring is, so let's, let's frame this, kind of like foundations is a framework for your pursuit of God. It helps you to understand a pursuit of God when you understand, number one, that we start by trusting Jesus, and number two, we live to honor God. And then number three, we grow by helping others, which is exactly what you're going to learn, because that's what mentoring is, is it's your opportunity to grow by helping someone else pursue God. So let's take a look at these three framing principles for mentoring, and let's, let's allow them to sort of speak into uh, some of our understanding as we move forward with this idea of biblical mentoring. Now, the first principle is really simple. It just is the definition of mentoring. Mentoring principle number one is to speak the truth in love. That's what we're doing in mentoring. We're speaking the truth to the people around us, our kids, our small group, your neighbors, you know, people that have asked for your help, whatever it is, you're speaking the truth. But you're doing it in love. You're speaking truth in a relational way. That's what love means. Love doesn't mean that you necessarily soften the truth, uh, although that maybe, it, maybe that means that at the beginning. But, but speaking the truth in love just means that you love someone enough to speak the truth in a way that they can understand it and receive it. But it's really important. They're, these are they're two sides of the same coin. You have to speak the truth, God's truth. We mean by that the Bible. So we're talking about, as a mentor, you, your goal should be to help someone discover a biblical worldview so that they can live out that worldview. So you have to speak the truth. You can't just sort of, you know, tell them what they want to hear. You know, a counselor, a, a secular counselor, their job is to help you discover your own truth. But that's not what biblical mentoring is. Biblical mentoring, the job of, of a biblical mentor is to help someone discover God's truth. Not just some, you know, truth that they want, that they have in their own heart. You know, we're not trying to help people follow their hearts. We're trying to help people follow God and let God change their hearts. And so speaking the truth in love requires that you understand the truth so that you can speak it out. Look at what it says in 2 Timothy 4, 2. Preach the word of God, Paul writes, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. That's basically what mentoring is. For a time is coming, Paul writes, when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching, they will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. And so they will reject the truth and chase after myths. And so that's a perfect verse for understanding mentoring. You know, Paul is telling Timothy to be a mentor, I mean, to be a pastor, but really, in essence, pastoring is similar to mentoring, um, except for that with mentoring, you can do it with more love because a pastor, when they're preaching to a large congregation, for example, they're, they're speaking truth to a crowd. But a mentor, a mentor gets a, sort of an advantage because a mentor gets to speak truth to a small group of people or to one person. So a pastor, a preacher speaks truth to a crowd. A mentor speaks truth in love. Not that the pastor doesn't love the people. But a mentor gets to do it more personally. It really leads to the second mentoring principle, and it's this. Share the right truth at the right time. You know, that's kind of what mentoring boils down to as far as tasks are concerned. Your job, your goal is to, with whoever you have in mind, with your kids, you want to speak the right truth with your kids at the right time. So that means that you need to know your kids, and it means that you need to know truth and, and so that you can speak the truth at the right time. So, for example, if I have a six-year-old boy, I'm not going to probably talk to him about pornography at six years old because that's really not the right truth at the right time for him. He doesn't really need that. That might be over his head. I mean, who knows? These days, maybe that's not over his head. But, but probably a little bit later, I would start talking to him about how, how we can honor God in that area of our lives. Bef I want to do it before he gets exposed to it, but I don't want to do it too quickly. Another great example of this is if you've got a neighbor that doesn't know the first thing about Jesus or the Bible, it's really not helpful for you to, to start speaking truth like, you know, you shouldn't 
do this or you shouldn't do that or you should tithe or something like that. Like that wouldn't make any sense for that person. That is not a truth that that person needs to needs to hear right now. They need to probably hear some other truth. So, so part of your job as a mentor, and this is just true for anyone who wants to make disciples and engage their community, is to know what truth anyone needs, a person needs to hear, and to know how to speak that truth at the right time. The right truth at the right time. And then the last principle is simply this. In biblical mentoring, you just want to keep moving forward. So if it's your neighbor who doesn't know Jesus, you want to, in your relationship with your neighbor, you want to, you want to help your neighbor to understand whatever you, your neighbor can understand. You want to model a life that's pleasing to God. And eventually you might be able to move your neighbor forward and, and get into a relationship with your neighbor where you can begin to speak more truth to your neighbor because you've earned that right. In a small group, um, you know, you've got people coming to your small group and you're trying to get them, maybe let's say that early on in the small group, you recognize by some of the comments they're making in small group, you recognize that they don't really understand the gospel. So you recognize that you need to just help them understand truth one. But once you get them to that, you want them to keep moving forward. You want to make sure that that then you move forward to, okay, what does it mean to honor God in our lives and talk to them about Bible study and in and, and some spiritual disciplines in their life. Eventually, you want to challenge them to be a giver, you know, to the kingdom of God. Everything, everything that is the Christian life, you want to help people with, just like with your children. You want to help them move forward. And as they grow up in their faith, they're maturing in their faith and they're moving forward. You want so so the third principle of mentoring is to just keep moving forward. And that's why, you know, our 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 cute logo there is a is a circle that circles back on itself because really you can think all uh, think of all of it in terms of foundations that we start by trusting Jesus, we live to honor God, and then we grow by helping others in moving forward. So the people that you eventually are are mentoring just like you're trying to be a mentor right now, eventually you're going to have people in your life that have followed the same path that you followed. They've trusted Jesus. They've they've learned to honor God in their life. And eventually, they're going to be ready to move forward and be a mentor as well. And you'll be bringing them through this same training because that's really what a pursuit of God is about. It's about moving forward. That's why we use the word pursuit. It's a pursuit. We're moving forward. We're not just sitting back. We're moving forward. We want to know God. We want to know his truth. And we want it to transform our everyday lives. And so we say that the goal of mentoring is to help people go full circle in their faith, to do those three things. And you never stop trusting Jesus. You never get to a point where you stop trusting Jesus. Every new situation, every new opportunity is a new opportunity to trust Jesus. We don't just start by trusting Jesus. We always do it. We never stop honoring God in our lives because we're never perfect at it. So we're always trying to honor God more and more in our lives. Every new situation, every new opportunity. And we should never also, we should never stop helping people pursue God. There should never be a point in our life where we say, hey, I'm done. I'm done helping people. I don't need to be in a small group anymore. I don't need to run a small group anymore. I don't need to pour into anyone's lives anymore. I'm done with that. I've graduated from that. There should never be a point in our lives where we stop doing that. We should always be moving forward. We should be going full circle in our faith and we should help other people go full circle in their faith as well. It, it's beyond what your pastor says to you about it or the church or anything like that. Like every individual Christian should have this desire because this is what Jesus said. He said, go and make disciples. He said, go and be biblical mentors. Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded to you. So I encourage you to think about those three mentoring principles. Use that discussion guide to talk about it now with your mentor or your pastor or your leader.